Uh, today I'll bring a show to talk about what's new in QA, uh, and it's about uh, field system test and uh, performance test. Uh, this, this topic is to, will, will be two people to talk, so I, I will I will uh, talk about the field system part. This is agenda, and uh, for field system test, uh, there's. 12.5% uh, kernel bugs found by XFS test. Uh, I will talk about how field system tests work uh, during SLE 12, SLE 15 kernel test. Uh, firstly, I will talk about myself. I uh, joined in test SLE uh, QA department for six years, and I now I'm working in QA APAC 2 team. And uh, I also participate uh, in kernel QA virtual team. This is uh, uh, my uh, QA APAC 2 team. You can see there's now too many people working uh, kernel function part. There's still high count there. And uh, this, this situation also happened in uh, different QA team. So uh, our kernel function guys to do Join together to a QA, uh, kernel QA virtual team. Uh, in this team, uh, Sebastian is the uh, product owner, and Cyril is the uh, Scrum master. And uh, we all focus on different uh, uh, area of kernel. And uh, sometimes we we, we should uh, uh, back up each other, and uh, we contain some test suite like uh, LTP. Uh, XFS test and uh, uh, test uh, NFV uh, infinity, infinity band or something like that. Also, uh, network part. Yeah, that's it. Uh, as I told, I, I'm being uh, focused on uh, field system part, so I start notice XFS test uh, from the topic uh, given by uh, uh, Luis, maybe in uh, Miklov. Uh, and then I realized this uh, has many benefits. To uh, firstly, it's can run in uh, QCode 2, uh, so it's uh, very easy to transfer between uh, product version, and it's easy to verify uh, if you uh, want to verify your fixing kernel. Uh, then it has a list of knowing show. This is a, a GitLab. Uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, uh, the upstream XFS. Uh, uh, the previous one I told is the uh, SLE uh, FS test is uh, seems like a, a for, uh, framework of the, how to run this XFS test. Uh, so XFS test, uh, the name is start with SFS, but it's not only test FS, it can uh, test also uh, but FS or, or EST4 and FS or something like that. It's all organized by uh, a folder a member uh, and a group. To look into folder, there's a, a, a generic share and uh, the different types of field system. And uh, in each of the folders, mm, just to look at this, the, the different test suite uh, just named as uh, those uh, member number. Uh, to um, if you want to know which uh, test case is in which part, you can see the uh, group fill in the folder. It can divide it into auto, quick, or metadata then draws. Some of them is named by area of uh, file system. But uh, and some some, uh, some of them is named like uh, quick or dangerous. Dangerous means you should be aware to run it in your own laptop. Maybe it will uh, make some noise to it. So uh, compare. Uh, uh, this is designed to compare with the uh, expected output with the real one. Uh, so it's uh, easy to use for QA department, and uh, the um, test running uh, bash and C, and with very nice uh, comments inside. It will uh, you will uh, very easy to know what is test with, and it's produced some kind of logs 
like a bad fool and the message. Uh, uh, first two is about uh, the process it's uh, in real run and uh, the, the message is the, the message message during the test run. And uh, then we consider about which framework we use. Because uh, in QA department, we used OpenQA uh, more popular. <laughs> and uh, uh, also, this is the uh, FS test is also a good, good one. But uh, mm, after some decided we choose OpenQA because uh, we are focused on uh, production and developing. And uh, um, three FS test is maybe for designed for developers. Uh, and it's uh, easy to compare with different products. Mm, but we focused on uh, the product under development. Uh, we, our goal is to test each build. So we choose OpenQA, and this can record test results between each milestone. Uh, also, we need some special features, like uh, sometimes it's uh, going to crash in some test cases, and we, we don't want it to stop there, and we uh, continue with it, with a reboot, and continue with, uh, to record the other tests. Mm, the last and is the most important one is we lack of uh, test machine for uh, S390 power and ARM, so uh, only QA can provide those for us. Here's the look like uh, in OpenQA. Uh, I uh, split uh, XFS test into pieces. Uh, some of group is, uh, is contain 50 uh, test cases. Some of them contain 100. And you can see the uh, green bubble uh, is the, is the pass, pass, and the red one is the fail. And uh, next to the red one, uh, there you can see some bugs. This can uh, open QA um, can, um, we can manually mark the, the bugs that, um, at first, and then if OpenQA find the next run is a similar feel like this, it, uh, it will add the uh, bug at, uh, at the, the same place directly. And uh, the sender symbol next to it is, uh, means the, some uh, test suit internal issues we need to, we need to fix. This is uh, um, some details. Uh, the bugs means we uh, reported it into um, bug data, and uh, the internal issues we fill it into POO. It's the progress open source org. Also, that's um, some other um, features what they have. Uh, when to reboot to continue test. Uh, I mean, it have been crashed. So some some key dump fail. Uh, Will stone automatically, and uh, it will uh, because it's split, split it, so this test uh, can be run in parallel. Uh, in if you, I run the whole upstream XFS test uh, in a line, it will finish around uh, X eight or nine hours, and now to run in parallel, it can finish in two hours around. Uh, and obviously, the back show is more clear here. Also, it has the benefit to find the regression. You can see there's the oh, uh, there's the build uh, in a line, and there's the suddenly a run bubble comes out. You can easily find the uh, the failed part. If you click the red bubble in. You can find the there's two type of uh, logs you can find. The left part you can download the whole uh, log package in the table, and the others is uh, a new feature to show the uh, important log in web UI. This make make me uh, more efficient to analyze these logs because it has uh, a, a thousands of test cases inside of it. And uh, uh, after each build, we have maybe only uh, one day to review it. Mm, the fail, failed part around the hundreds, so it will take a long time. So uh, 
here, here is the configure part of the backend. We only care about the text range and the blacklist. Uh, the blacklist uh, at the beginning is not included. Uh, in that time, the old te test is in red. <laughs> you cannot see any change between builds. So we, uh, we, we move some, some always failed or uh, developer knows already have bugs, those end up developing um, out to a dangerous zone. Just like this, we put some uh, easy to fill or crash or have some um, internal issue not fixed in, into this test group. And uh, this can make uh, uh, log analysis more easy. When we start to use it, it's uh, a run in SLE 12 SP3 RC stage, RC stage, and uh, uh, I found six bucks by it in two weeks. It's a good starter. Uh, and we keep enhancement the framework, make it uh, more and more easy to use. And then in SLE 15, it found 55 bucks. Uh, I just uh, searched this number in Bagdela and uh, the filter by XFS test or FS test, and uh, uh, I got it. And, uh, it's covered around 12.5% uh, of kernel bug we found in QA, and of them, uh, the priority is not, not too low. Uh, also, meanwhile, LTP found five system bugs. And uh, Trinity also found one by fasting test. So during that time, I I, I was charging FI, XFS and I feel a lot of um, bugs on that. I think maybe next time I will more, put more focus on but FS part. Uh, I make a, a very short uh, um, introduce for FS testing LTP. Uh, the organization is a little different with uh, XFS test. It's organized by test area, and uh, you can see from the LS this uh, divided by some features or test types. Uh, but it, when it's run, you you should go into the run test uh, folder and. Uh, run by different types of uh, file system. But this, um, for now, it's not that much types. Uh, uh, the, this part, I think, need to get some enhancements. And those code, I need to look into more deeper. Um, at last, we have, um, nowadays, we have some um, trouble to fix. Uh, first, the, uh, because now it's the 12 SP4 standard testing, we find the, the bug is less and less by the store. Maybe it's uh, because of the product quality is uh, better and better, uh, but uh, it's, the bug reduce is not a good thing for QA. <laughs> we, we will uh, try to find more ways or uh, add more scenario to cover more code in the kernel part. And uh, also the KDAM fail is not too big. To, it um, takes a, a lot of storage in OpenQA server. So the, um, they don't want us to enable it until we solve that problem. Uh, so next step I will um, maybe find some necessary uh, KDAM fail to upload or um, make, make, try to find it, a way to make it uh, smaller. Uh, as I told, uh, the log analyze uh, still take me a lot of time during um, each build test because our goal is to um, got analyzed by each build. Um, for those parts, maybe the log enhancement or uh, some other, or maybe consider AI to deal with something with, with the log analysis. Uh, and for some of tests is uh, still unstable, um, around uh, two or three testing a run will uh, fail by fake 
especially those tests uh, and their uh, FS stress. Uh, that this part is really tough for me. Uh, I need to uh, log into it. And uh, the, the last thing is we need to uh, extend the ta test uh, coverage for more uh, field system. Now, I, I, from, from my point of view, I, I just uh, test the XFS and the ButFS um, for this moment. OK, this is the first part. Is there uh, any question for the FS test part? I just had a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, for your test setup in OpenQA, um, do you, how many disks do you use to test with? Sorry, I don't get it. How many disks do you use? Uh, how many disks? I use, uh, a bit because this, uh, this is a tricky part, because OpenQA uh, build with uh, some some the code code to build with the home partition. I just divided the home partition into pieces as the test uh, suit. Uh, now it's uh, used on uh, use only two for XFS test uh, and uh, use five for ButFS test. But but uh, you know this the home partition defaults in OpenQA is not that big. So some of tests uh, is uh, has uh, fake uh, uh, output is said not, not enough space, so maybe we will deal with it later. Okay, yeah, I yeah. was just curious to see if you're covering all of the, the ButterFS RAID modes, because those require more devices, but it sounds like you are. Mm, yeah. um, how many CPU cores in each one? CPU cores, uh, on, only one. Okay, for file systems, we're absolutely going to need more than one core. Mm, yeah, but uh, uh, you can also configure in uh, OpenQA that has different types of machines. Uh, one of them is mm, named, uh, I forgot name, but it uh, contains uh, 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 how, uh, many uh, CPU in it. You can, uh, we can choose this because uh, uh, now the machine is limited uh, after we enhancement those uh, frame better and better. We we can talk to the Open QA team, the uh, the QA tools team, to maybe add more uh, machine type for us. Yeah. So you guys have shaken out some some functional bugs with one core, and there was a weird one where uh, mm. at least one of the underlying assumptions that we make a lot now is that most systems are going to have more than one core. So there was a weird bug where uh, it just didn't give up the CPU. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so that one was a good one to catch. But the biggest ones that we're concerned about are the race conditions. And without multiple cores, we're never going to see them. Gotcha. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't need to be like 50. Like four is fine. So you can get it on, on nearly any system. Yeah, that part uh, maybe we, we, we don't, didn't cover yet. Maybe okay. uh, I, will, I will make it work. Um, the other question I had was, are you guys tracking which tests aren't, aren't getting run? So XFS tests has this thing where if uh, certain requirements aren't met, it just won't run the test and it won't output a bad file or anything like that. Um, and so what Luis, Luis's scripts are based on stuff that I have uh, in my home test environment where I have like a bunch of things where it makes sure that, you know, there's, there's enough disks to use. There's uh, FIOs installed, dbench is installed, uh, you need the FSGQA user and group set up for certain tests and things like that. And yeah, but but uh, it can only run in uh, in QMU, right? I I use KVM to do all my testing. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, because we can also cover the bare metal machine in OpenQA. Well, it's, it's not the, it's not the bare metal versus VM that's the issue here. It's just making sure that the test environment has everything that's required to execute, and it's not always obvious what that is. Um, so what I end up doing is I, like Luis's scripts do this too, where it just sanity checks to make sure that everything you need is there. Um, I also have uh, patches for XFS tests that I need to send upstream that you guys will probably be interested in. Mm -hmm. um, 
that ex that uh, are much more verbose in the logging. So right now you only get the 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 bad file, the D message file, and the full file. And the full file can be there even for successful tests. It doesn't tell you what tests run, and it doesn't tell you why they didn't run. You have to go through the actual XFS test log for that. Um, so I have patches that drop a, a start timestamp, a stop timestamp, if it didn't run, why it didn't run, um, if it failed, why. And so the idea is that you end up with this results directory that you can just tar up. And that would probably map pretty well to what you're doing with your dashboard. Um, so, so one of the other things is, at least for us, it's knowing whether a test succeeds or fails is good to know. But if a, if a test suddenly starts taking double the time, that's also something we need to know. Because it's not necessarily a benchmark, but it's an indication that something's wrong. And, mm -hmm. and so those are things that we need to know about, know about too. And the, the logging the XFS test produces now doesn't make that easy to find. Yeah. Um, so we'll, I'll, we'll get those, I'll get those cleaned up and, and sent so that you guys can use them as well. Mm. Um, the other thing is that uh, the ButterFS tests, as they are in XFS tests, aren't necessarily useful or as useful for the way that we at, at SUSE use ButterFS as the root file system with QGroups enabled. Because QGroups aren't enabled in XFS tests except for QGroup specific tests. So I have another basic patch that uh, lets you just set a variable in the config file that enables QGroups, waits for it to do the non-existent resync, and then continues the test so that you're doing the test with QGroups on. And so like, it would be good to have test results with QGroups and without QGroups. And the reason I say that is because there are tests that we know will fail, or more accurately, will never finish with QGroups. Um, so your exclude list is going to be different. OK. We'll take it and uh, uh, have a try, maybe, in the next step. Thank you for your advice. Sure. Mm. OK, please. Thanks. Um, I'm just curious. This is indirectly related to what you said, and that has to do with whether you do any performance-related te related testing. You were talking about how long it takes for a test to finish. Um, we, I was doing a lot of uh, performance testing with Swift. Uh, OpenStack Swift and OpenStack Swift, <clears throat> excuse me, builds a builds its object store on top of XFS. And some of the kinds of tests that I was running was to see what happens as you fill up Swift over time, which in turn fills up XFS. And one of the things that I found out was when you create a lot of objects, i.e., files, and we're talking millions, when each each object would create um, an inode in uh, slab memory, and when you got into the tens of millions of objects, you would literally fill up slab, and then you would start thrashing like hell. And if you plotted the performance of IOPS versus the number of files, you would find it would gradually come down, and then it would drop like a stone, and the performance would fall in half. And I'm just wondering if you've done any of that kind of testing or not, and whether uh, or not that's, I mean, this was years, this was a couple of years ago, so it could, in fact, no longer even be a problem. Uh, mean, I don't know. You mean performance test? Pardon? You mean performance test? Yes. Or, uh, there's uh, another colleague from, from my team, she will update the okay. performance test. Okay, great, yeah. great. Yeah, because okay. that kind of falls into the same category of, um, you know, beating FSF into submission by overloading you know, the file system and just filling up all disks and whatever. And if you only have a couple of disks, you probably not be able to do that. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. And memory, too. <laughs> uh, I'm running out of time. I would uh, just want to hand over to my colleague. Thank you.
Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Joyce. Uh, my topic is performance test enhancement. Uh, there are four. There are four subtopics about my my topic. <laughs> the first one is the monitor. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the first one is the monitor. I will introduce the tools we new added, observe the system activity. And the second one is the test scenario enhancement. Uh, the third one is the useful tool helping us to debug issue. And uh, the last one is about the CI. Uh, the first is the um, monitor. Here we can see on the left side uh, is our old monitor list. Um, uh, it have the VM state. Uh, it's reporting information about process, memory, uh, paging, block I/O, etc. And uh, we also have uh, I/O state monitoring the system input output, and uh, PID state and uh, SAR. Um, after enhancement, uh, now it's become a long list, uh, but only two are new added. It's uh, third state and uh, monitor hook. Mm. Others are just the way splitted from the SAR. So why we split SAR? Mm. We know SAR is a powerful performance monitor tool. It can monitor various Linux subsystem such as mon uh, CPU, memory, I.O. Uh, in the real time. Uh, in our previous system, we dump all the possible information into one ICR log, <clears throat> so the log file is too big to get useful, useful information. Uh, so we split it to several uh, monitor based on our test scenario. Mm, here you can see some example, such as for monitor IPv6 and IPv4 uh, for network type cases and the uh, monitor scheduler for hackbench cases and the uh, monitor pages for IO cases. Mm. Now, for our regular run list, by default monitor, we will turn on the VM state, IO state, and PID state, and the uh, other monitor can be specific with the test scenario. Mm. After split, the focus of our analysis is uh, more clearly, and it can make the log graphing more easily. Uh, third state is a new, uh, new added monitor. Uh, third state can report CPU frequency and idle power state statistic. Here is a simple example <coughs> about third state output. Uh, here you can see the C1, C1E, C3. Uh, this is the number time Linux required a C state during the Maven interval. So, um, what is the C state? Sorry. Uh, this one. Uh, when CPU is idle, in order to save energy, the CPU can be commanded to enter the low power module. Sorry, it's not the correct one. Oops. 
the CPU can be commanded to enter low power module. Each CPU has several has several power modules and they call C state and C module. Here we can see with the turp state. Uh, so here, uh, let's see what we found with turp, turp state during testing. Uh, here is a bug about the about the IO cases. Um, here we can see when the low thread cases got much decline about the high thread cases, especially for the thread put is four, it got about uh, mm, more than 48% decline. And after you use the turp state, compare the good and bad kernel, we found the 6.3 and the 6.6 six of the bad kernel is higher than the good one. This means the bad kernel got more deep sleep and uh, it will need more time to wake up CPU. So maybe this is not root cause of this bug, but it brings some idea for following analysis. Uh, from this bug, we found turp state TurpState can help us to monitor power management behavior. So we add it to our automation framework. Hope you will find more interesting thing with this. The next one is the monitor hook. Uh, it's just an entry to load any monitor you want. The monitor information can be get from the config file. Here is an example about config field. Uh, here is uh, add a perf record into our system. After add this hook, we can easily enrich our monitor to set. The next one also help us resolve many problems. It's a machine status monitor. Uh, here I want to talk some uh, background about our testing. For each milestone, the whole testing may last for one or two one or two weeks. And uh, during this time, we will try to not touch the test machine to ensure the accurate and the stability of the result. And uh, we will check test result on remote server, we call it dashboard. On dashboard, it's very easy to find whether the case is pass or field, but it's not easy to find hardware issue. Mm, such as once we found there are many I.O. cases filled on one machine, we we spend um, we spend a lot of time to debug this issue, but at last we found it's just a hardware issue. One of the memory bar is broken, mm, but this issue make our automation testing last several hours when we end a very uh, tight scheduler. Uh, so we add following machine status monitor. Uh, when there is a call trees, uh, our machine is offline, um, memory changed, uh, partition changed, QA will receive an email and fix it at the, at the first time and to make we keep on the schedule. So, where is that man? So next is the test scenario enhancement. Uh, here we can see in our system, we already have a uh, sleep and the uh, file system and the uh, network and database and uh, after enhancement, we add the scheduler benchmark hackbench and the NPB benchmarks. 
Uh, first is Hackbench. Hackbench is a both a benchmark and a stress test for the Linux kernel scheduler. Uh, it works by create um, multiple pairs of thread or process that pass data between between themselves at over socket or pep. Uh, here is a result of a typical run. Um, it shows 200 pair of processed pass data over socket. The latency is uh, 15 three seconds. Um, Hackbench is a very popular scheduler benchmark, but it, the bad thing is the output is too simple to analyze. This. And uh, uh, the next is the NPB. Uh -oh. uh, before we add NPB, uh, we are suffering with some one single error micro benchmark. Since the fix of one of them may increase the other ones, so we got suggestion from the lab performance team. Then we add NPB benchmarks. Um, NPB benchmark is a primary CPU and the memory intention, but it also good at CPU scheduler, CPU frequency management, and uh, interaction with automatic NUMA balance. Uh, in our test suite, we test NPB 3.3 .3 with MPI and uh, open MP implementation. Uh, MPI is a way to program on distributed memory device, and uh, open MP is a way to program on shared memory device. Mm, here is the problem set. Uh, problem sets in NPB are predefined and uh, indicated as different classes. Here is table list the uh, problem sets for each of classes defined in NPB 3.3. And on the right side is our test machine resource. Based on our test machine memory sets, we choose the class C and the class D to test. Uh, above all are new added benchmark. The next one is the enhancement about what we already have in our previous test suite. We have some cases with run, uh, run with the very high thread. You can see there are maybe more than 400 thread. It may cause machine in the heavily over saturated. So we remove some very high thread cases and set the max number to four times CPU numbers. Uh, so here the test case enhancement next is uh, useful to helping us to debug issue. Uh, this tool is named that uh, AutoBasic. This is an automatic git basic to based on our performance test uh, automation framework. Um, the build can be made with the IBS or the local sleek kernel source tree. Um, the test case will be run with performance test framework named with QA test set automation. And uh, all the logs can be found in QADB. It's easy for QA to do more debugging in the future. Uh, here is a autobiosec config, config file. Uh, most of the items just keep as default, only few items need change, such as the machine you want to test uh, first good and bad commit, which baseline you want to compare, uh, compare and uh, test case the, and the key value you want to check. When the basic is complete, uh, there we will log display each basic result, but this log just tell us basic is good, uh, which basic is good and which basic is bad. So we use another tool to get more detailed information. It's a customized comparison. The left line is the build and the testing, and the others, and the, the others are. Uh, the build you want to compare with. Mm. Uh, 
then you can get a uh, all round the uh, result. Um, something like like this. Oh, something like this. Yes. Uh, the right the right line is the build and the testing, and the the left to a baseline. Okay, the last one is the, sorry, but this bit changed. Okay, the last one is CI. For full automation, CI is a must. Um, last year, and last year's SUSE Lab conference, my colleague have shared some difficulty we met during CI. Today we got something can be shared. Uh, same as Cyril just said, we also use OpenQA as our CI tool because it's really powerful and uh, popular. But it's not perfect, such as it's difficult to display our performance test result in OpenQA. Uh, here we can see we use the current job to monitor build on Beijing build server. And uh, we use OpenQA uh, install host and uh, set up environment and execute cases. But the results still display on our dashboard. On the slides, you can see the OpenQA screenshot, the last line is the host install. Uh, we we use the bare metal uh -huh, and the uh, environment and the environment setup cases. Uh, and the the above one is the performance test cases run one by one. So here the result display on displayed on the dashboard. Um, you can check more detail on when you press the press the button. So here is what we will do for next step. Uh, for currently, we use our local OpenQA server. The reason is it will need a long time install Beijing server with official OpenQA server, which is based on the German. So it's one thing we need to do next step. The second is, like I just mentioned, uh, performance results presented with OpenQA have a little bit complicated. Uh, we need to think more about it. The last one is we will try to spell back verification with the CI, such as when the developer's patch is ready and uh, it can install automatically and uh, give the test result. Thank you, it's end. Hope with this future, hope with this enhancement, uh, QA shall be able to pay more effort to do deep analysis on the performance issue and the tuning method and share more efficiency cooperation with developer teams. Thanks all. <laughs> ah, any questions? I saw your test results there. There's a comparison. It's actually compared between different uh, version, right? Yes, different kernel version. But do you like uh, to compare with different uh, uh, hard, the because performance will be re rely on hardware devices very a lot. Do you think about that kind of a different platform, different CPU, different device, or or even more even like uh, the test results on bare metal and test result on virtualization VM, do they have like, uh, do they able to be comparable? Like, do they comparable? Uh, currently it's not our test scope. Uh, we just compare with the different kernel, kernel version. But just as I said, we have a customized comparison. If you want to got this, this information, you can use that too and it can give you some more result. Okay, thanks. Okay, so thanks all.